We've been in a sermon series called Made for More. And in it, we've been looking at these vivid descriptors that Peter has for the church and for Christians in 1 Peter. And so we talked about, the first week we talked about what it meant to be chosen. In the second week, we talked about what it meant to be exiles. Last week, we talked about what it meant to be living stones. And all the while, we've been looking at these various descriptions that Peter has for the church. And we've been asking the question, if this is our identity, how do we live that out? How does that inform our purpose? And this week, we're going to talk about faithful stewards. It's from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. And this is what Peter says. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. I think there are three simple things that I want you to know from that verse right off the bat. The first one is that we've all received grace. That word is charisma, and it means gift or grace. We've all received a special gift. We've all received grace. Grace is, the theological concept could be defined as the unmerited work of God in us, for us, and through us. You see, oftentimes we think that grace is just forgiveness. And, and so we use that. You know, someone, someone hurts us or offends us, and we might say, well, there's grace for that. But grace is more than just forgiveness. It's really anything good that God does in our life, and, and we haven't deserved it. That's it. The unmerited, the unearned work of God in our lives. And Scripture says that each of us has received grace. Scripture also says that we should use it to serve others. You've been given grace in order for you to use it to serve others. This is what the Holy Spirit, speaking through Peter, is telling us. And lastly, that you are stewards of God's grace. And all of that is packed into that that very first verse from Peter. You are a steward of the grace of God. What is a steward? It's somebody that's been entrusted with something, and they're asked to use it wisely, right? Right? This means that the more active I am and the more involved I am in community, then the more that people get to experience God's grace through me. But I want to suggest something else. I want to suggest that the opposite is true. I want to suggest that God has given us so much dignity that he makes it possible for us to withhold his grace from others. If, if God has given me grace and, and he's asked me to use it for others and I'm not active and I'm not involved and I'm not in community, I'm not caring for people and I'm, I'm not participating, then I'm not stewarding that grace well. In fact, I'm wasting it. I'm keeping it over here away from others. Which means that God has given each of us such incredible dignity that he would allow us to have grace that's meant for others, that he would allow us to withhold that. So the more that I'm involved in community, the more that I'm participating and contributing, the more that people are experiencing God through me, and the less that I'm involved, the less that I'm participating, the less that I'm contributing, the less that people are experiencing of God through me. And that's the dignity that each believer has received according to 1 Peter. In 1987, There's a man named Enoch Olson, and he's giving a speech. And uh, and he's a a founder of Spring Hill Camps, which is a summer camp for Christian teens in northern Michigan. And he's recounting a story. And, And Enoch gives the advice. He says, you know, everything, when we started our camp, everything that we had was given to us. And one of the things that I learned was you never turned anything down because every once in a while somebody would want to give you something worth it. And so I don't know if he's got a bit of a hoarder mentality in him or what, but he's just, he's taken everything he can to build this summer camp. And, uh, and so someone calls him and says, hey, we've got some, some dishes and some kitchenware and, and we're just going to put it out on the curb 
and I'm sure somebody will come and pick it up, but if you want it, you have first dibs. And he says, hold on. Enoch says, let me make a call, and we'll be down there. So he calls his friend. His friend comes over to the campsite, to the campground, and, uh, and his friend says, we're not taking that truck, are we? And Enoch has this old beater pickup truck that's hardly running, and he says, yeah, that's, that's what I got. That's what we're taking. And, and his friend says, you shouldn't even be driving that around the campgrounds, let alone driving it into town to pick something up. And he says, what should we do? And his friend says, well, we should pray. So he pulls over, and he prays, and he says, God, I pray that this truck would get us to where we need to go so we can pick up these supplies for this camp. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Gets back on the road. They start driving again. They make a right out of their campground. They start heading up the hill. They make it about three-quarters of the way up the hill. Truck breaks down. Right? They put it in neutral, they guide it gently back to the side of the road, and they, they put it in park on the shoulder. And Enoch says, well, what should we do? And his friend says, I think you need to pray again. <laughs> and Enoch says, well, what should we pray for? And his friend says, I think you need to pray for a new truck. <laughs> so he puts his hands on the steering wheel, and he puts his head down, and he says, Heavenly Father, Lord, Will you provide us with a new truck? I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. They get out of the truck and they start walking up the hill towards town. They get right over the hill and they see a sign that says Shaw's Construction Company. And so they enter this, this construction yard and there's a trailer there that the office is, is operating out of and there's construction vehicles and heavy equipment, and then a line of brand new quarter-ton, half-ton, one-ton pickup trucks. And Enoch turns to his friend and he says, well, pick one out. <laughs> right? And they, they go into this trailer and they say, we're here to see Mr. Shaw. And the woman lets them back to see the boss. And, uh, and Enoch is there. And he's and he's giving them the biggest guilt trip of his life that he can imagine. You know, he's, listen, we're just building a camp for these children, and we are, we're building it with nothing, and everything that we have is given to us, and, and sir, our truck just broke down, and we've been praying and asking God for help, and, and we saw your business, and, and would you give us a truck? Mr. Shaw says, no, but I'd be happy to sell you one. And Enoch says, listen, listen, this is how much money I have. This is what we're going to use to pay for lunch. We probably won't eat today. I can't buy a truck, but I would love to have a truck. <laughs> and this goes on and on, and, and Mr. Shaw, eventually, he gets annoyed, and he's less and less polite. And, and Enoch keeps pressing, keeps guilt tripping, and, and, and Mr. Shaw says, I think it's time for you to leave. Escorts him out the front door. Enoch gets about two steps out the front door. And he says, Mr. Shaw, have you ever seen a miracle before? And he thinks for a moment. He says, no, I don't think I have. And before Enoch can say anything else, Mr. Shaw says, wait a second. You're going to ask me if I will be the miracle for you. You want me to answer God's prayer because you prayed and now you want me to prove that God is real. And Enoch says, yeah, that's where I was going with that. <laughs> and as Enoch tells the story, his accountant was there, and he asked what all the fuss was about. Mr. Shaw's accountant was doing taxes that day, and, uh, and so they had a conversation, and the accountant ends up telling Mr. Shaw to donate one of his trucks to Enoch because it would somehow be better for him that way, according to his taxes. And, and so he ends up walking out of there with a one-ton flatbed pickup truck. And they're driving into town. And Enoch's friend is going, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe this. And I think Mr. Shaw makes a good point Sometimes God wants us to answer those prayer requests in a, in a very real way. 
Sometimes God does want us to, to provide the miracle that someone is looking for. Is that not what Peter is saying when he says that we are to be stewards of the grace that God has given us and it's been given to us specifically so that we can serve others with it? And so I want to suggest three lessons to us this morning. The first one is this. Availability is better than ability. I think that some famous coach said that once, but it applies here. Availability is better than ability. Right, I, I mean, if you have all of this skill set, all of this gifting and talent, but you're not available, then you're, you're, what are you worth to people that need your help? And yet if you're mediocre at everything, but you're available, my goodness, God can use you. And so there are, there are two things that I, I think we should know in, that help us to be available. The first one is we need to create margin in our life. I had a theology professor who was a pastor first, and, and, and when he was pastoring, he set his family's budget to a certain amount. And he said, this is how much our family needs to live off of. And then every time he would get a raise or a promotion, or he's a United Methodist pastor, or go to a different church, then all of that money that his family wasn't using went to mission, went to God, went to outreach, went to others. And he said, but one of the beneficial things of doing this with your life, creating margin, is that when I was called to be a professor, and, and the school that I went to work for said, but we can't pay you as much as you're making now. He was able to say, it doesn't matter. No problem. Man, if this is what God wants us to do, our family, I don't even have to worry about what it'll cost my family because we're, we're already living within our means and that won't affect our life at all. And so he was able to receive that call and answer that call because he created margin in his life. In the same way, when we do that with our time and our energy, we're not constantly being stretched thin, but we're creating margin in our life. I think about the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, one of the reasons that the, the Good Samaritan is able to stop and, and help the person on the side of the road is because apparently he's created margin in his life, or at least he's willing to sacrifice it. But sometimes we're, we're too busy to see the needs and the opportunities that might be right in front of us. Availability is better than ability. The second thing, other than creating margin to be available, is we need to be willing to take risks. We need to be willing to take risks. And so imagine for a moment that you see someone crying at the grocery store. You've got two options right there on the spot, and probably we've all been there before. You can either say, well, that person clearly needs privacy, and you can walk by, and guess what? God will not use you in that moment. Or you can say, hey, how can I help? Is there anything I can do? And guess what? God might use you in that moment. So you have to create margin, and you have to be willing to take risks. We, uh, we partner with CHOP, Conroe House of Prayer, and the third Tuesday of every month, we go and deliver a hot meal, and we provide a a lunch, a bag lunch for them, and there's worship, and there's a message every weekday, and, and so our church gets to participate and contribute to this. And so this past Tuesday, Jude and Shepard, my uh, six-year-old and my four-year-old, really love it, and they really want to go to CHOP, so I put them in the van, we head out, and I get a text message from someone at our church that says, hey, there's a homeless person sleeping outside of your church. And... Uh, and so I turn around, come back to the church, and, and there are some, some ladies there and, and Dan Groves, and they're getting ready for, for chop and preparing the meal and putting it in their cars. And, and sure enough, there's a, there's a guy sleeping outside of our church. On the very day that we are going, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get past any of us that, man, this is the day that we are going to Conroe House of Prayer. Right? And so... Lori Malone and I go and, and talk to the man, wake him up, and, and man, hey, I, you know, we are headed to a homeless ministry right now, and you can have a hot meal and a bagged lunch, 
And there will be resources and community there for you if you want that. And what are the odds that this has happened? And I totally recognize that if our church wasn't willing to step into that ministry, that opportunity wouldn't have been there for God to use us in that way, right? That availability is worth more than ability. When Lori Malone organizes a prayer rally for her friend Tori at Conroe House of Prayer, or sorry, at Conroe Regional, Regional Hospital, and she's using whatever gift she's received to serve others as a steward of God's grace. When Janet Allen mobilizes our church to care for members in need, members who all of a sudden need to be fed, or members who need a hot meal, or members who need someone to stay overnight, she and all of those people that are participating are using whatever gift they've received from God as faithful stewards. When Karen Bogus organizes a group of women to knit scarves and hats for orphans in Kazakhstan, they're doing the same thing. They're being faithful stewards of whatever gift that God has given to them, and they're using it to serve others. So the first lesson is we need to be available. The second one is this. Be a spotlight. Don't seek the spotlight. You know, as we, as we read that verse and Peter is talking about serving with the strength that God provides and speaking with the words that God provides, I think one of the things we need to recognize is whatever I'm doing, it hasn't really come from me. I mean, I don't really get to take credit for my body or my mind or or my skills, or my talent, or even my finances. Everything that I have, I have because God has given it to me. And so there's no sense seeking a spotlight for myself. In fact, Peter is asking us to be a spotlight, to put the light on God, to say, this is the person that you want to know. You know, yeah, maybe... Maybe he's given me money. Maybe I get to contribute financially. And maybe that makes it look like I'm so generous. But the truth of the matter is, he's asked me to be a steward of it. And so he set this aside a long time ago for you. He just invited me to get front row seats to it. Right? Whenever I give and whenever I'm using what God has given me as a steward and serving others with it, isn't it true that in reality, man, I, I just got invited to participate in the work that God was doing, and He was going to do it one way or another. I just get to have front row seats to it. So we need to make sure that we point to God. And so Peter says, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. The third lesson is this. Let people help. You know, if I'm a faithful steward of the grace that God has given me, and if I'm supposed to use the gift that God has given me to serve others, then isn't it true that other people are faithful stewards and that God has given them a gift and that they're to use it to serve others? And so I need to be willing to ask for help. And I need to allow people to help when I truly need help. And uh, I don't always do this well. <laughs> you know, sometimes somebody will be like, hey, is there anything I can help you with? And I'll be like, no, I got it all together. <laughs> and sometimes that, that can't be further from the truth, right? In fact, um, it happened that, that somebody had offered to help me. And I turned it down and I kind of, you know, um, it was just not allowing that person to help me. I remember telling that story to Wendy Wilbur afterwards, who goes to our church, and she said, Keith, if I may, you robbed that person from the opportunity for God to work through them. You robbed that person of a chance to be blessed by God and, and to be a blessing for God. And, you know, I think she was right. So we need to be willing to ask for help and we need to be willing to receive help and recognize that 
when we do, we're allowing other people to be used by God. So here's two tangible ways that you can respond today. Some of this was by design. Some, a little bit of it was by chance. Uh, come to the volunteer fair after church today. It's in the fellowship hall. It's 30 minutes. And you can see all of the ways that you can get involved, all the ways that you can tr- contribute, and maybe you'll think of a way that, that that fits with your gifting, and you can go, yes, I can, I can use my gift to serve God as a faithful steward of the various uh, grace of God. And if you're not available, you know, if you're like, oh, I got something going on after church, I want to point out the fact that that kind of proves my point. I understand that you might not be available. I understand we've got things going on, so I don't want you to feel that. But I do want you to see the illustration. Availability is better than ability. And then the second thing, the second concrete response that you can have to this message, ask for help. Man, if you're struggling, if you need help, I want you to just email admin at soundchurchtx.com or email Keith at soundchurchtx.com or email dowin at soundchurchtx.com go to our website find our email address if you don't want to memorize what i just said i want you to ask for help if you need finances i want the church to be one of the first places that you turn to if you need people if you need meals if you need social interaction if you need somebody to deliver groceries i want you to reach out i want you to ask for help This is what we are called to do as a church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, each of us has been given a gift. That's what your word says. Each of us has been given grace. And we're to use it to serve others. And we're to be faithful stewards of that grace that you've given to us that's meant for others. And so, Lord, help each one of us. Help each one of us to to steward it well, God, to use it well, to allow you to work through us in the lives of other people, to answer prayers and be the miracle that you want to do in someone's life. Lord, and help us to be available to do so. Help us to be intentional, to create margin in our lives. Help us to be willing to take risks, Lord. God, help us to be a spotlight. And Lord, help us to be willing to ask for help and receive help when we need it. Thank you, Lord, for all this church does to be there for one another. We pray that you would continue to bless us and help us to do more. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.